Number one then, the first one in paper two of the 2021 National Five Maths. Three mark question for that compound percentage increase. Again, it's the standard, they just seem to do this all the time now. It's always a percentage increase and it's the same increase each year. Whereas it could be varied, so you'd have to have various factors you might multiply by, there might be some decreasing ones. But here it's just the same as usual. So what does it say? The price of a house in twenty or house build in 2020, so I'll call that P naught, standing for the price at the start, is 250,000. You don't need to write this down, I'm just putting this down to have something to look at there. I can look at it here, I'm going to put that away. And it's bit it's meant to increase by four percent each year, so you'll need to put this bit down to show that because this is the critical bit to the calculation. An increase of four percent means you're going to multiply by a factor of 1.04. 4% is four hundredths, that's 0.04, and you're going to add it on to the original 100, so it's 104%, and that's what becomes 1.04 as a decimal. And it says, what's it going to be in 2022? I'll take a note of that. 2020 to 2022 is two years. So you're going to apply this twice. Well, sort of one mark here, you get one mark for recognising you need to use a factor of 1.04 if you're going to do it the sensible way, which is just to do it in one calculation. So what would the calculation be? What would be the price after two years? Well, it would be the initial price, the price at the start, multiplied by this factor once for every year. So it's for two years, it'll be times 1.04 times 1.04. The simplest way to put that is 1.04 squared. Putting that down, Gets the next mark, and then putting that into your calculator will give you the final mark. So putting it into your calculator, press and equals, and you've got 270,400. For the third mark, the quick way. Although in this case you could have, but you shouldn't, you could have gone that tedious route of doing that the long way of finding 4%, adding it on, find another 4%, add it on. It's only two years this time. Actually, that 4% is quite an easy fraction to find of this because 4% is a 25th. So you wouldn't even need to use a calculator to do it the sort of long way because you could just say this. this. The increase the first year is going to be 4% of 250,000. Well, that's a 25th of it. So that's just going to be 10,000. Which means its value after one year will be, just setting it all out, that's, that's what it takes so long really doing it this way, plus the 10,000 is going to be 260,000. Right, so that's the first step done. Now you just do that again. The 25th isn't going to work quite so well this time. It worked really well there, because now it's going to be 4% of the new amount. So I'll apply a different technique and just interpret that as divide by 100, multiply by 4. Multiplying that by 4, it's just over the 100, that's 104. I don't even need to do that, I know the size of it. The figures are 104, it must be the same size as this, so that must be 10,000. So it must be that. So the value after two years would be 260,000 plus 10,400, which is 270,400. So it didn't take that much longer. It's still pretty pointless though, isn't it, when you can just do that? Number two then. Light travels at 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second, so I'll just call that S. Usually it's got C, but call that S. And a star is 4.2 times 10 to the 7 metres. At least I've put it in metres, so you don't have to change any units here. Away, I'll just call that D. Because what you have to do is find the number of seconds it takes for light to reach you. And you have to give your answer in scientific notation. You're given it in scientific notation to begin with. Well, that's just going to be time equals distance over speed. The time's going to be, and nothing needs changing, 4.2 times 10 to the 17 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8. And realising you need to do that, and that's the correct way to do it, that division gets you a mark. Now it's just, what's the answer? Well, it's actually a calculator paper, but that division's just got, that four and two makes six, three goes into that exactly. You could just do this in your head, this part, because three into 4.2 will be 1.4. And when you're dividing 
powers, you subtract their indices, 17 take away 8, so it must be times 10 to the 9, and nothing needs changing, because that was a number between 1 and 10 seconds. So that gives you your answer. Now, if you had used your calculator, it's actually going to take an awful lot longer. Well, first of all, you'd have to type all this in, and by the time you've typed that in, you could have worked that answer out. Now, if you use the fraction button, then you could probably put your numbers in quite safely. But if you're just going to use divide between these two numbers, you have to be careful. Don't put in 4.2 and a times 10 to the something or times anything divided by something times something, because that last times will end up as a multiplication. It won't be a division underneath. But you can get around that just by using the fraction button. If you were to use divide, there's still this business. Do you trust that EXP button? Can I enter that just as 4.2 EXP 17 divided by 3 EXP 8? See, that's the tricky bit. Will that come out? And look at how it comes out. So it's, it is the same answer. 1, 4 with all of those zeros. There's eight zeros there. You'd have to write that down. You'd have to write down equals 1, 4, and then count them all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think, oh no, that's not in proper scientific notation. I'll have to go back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to get it after the first figure times 10 to the 9. So yes, you could use a calculator, and yes, you can trust that EXP button. But this one you could just do in your head, though. So number three then, just for the two marks, fully factorise this little expression here. Well, you look at that, and it looks like the difference to two squares, except they're not perfect squares, are they? But that doesn't matter, because the first thing you would do regardless is look for common factors. Three goes into them both. Seven and five add up to twelve. Three goes into twelve. Three goes into them both. So take out the common factor of three, and then worry about what you've got. So three into that is twenty-five. And that's the first mark. Take out the common factor. Now you can see you've got the difference of two squares. That's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. So it'll be three times. And you know it'll just be whatever's being squared and whatever's being squared. And then it's up to you. Will, I put, will you put minus plus or will you put plus minus? You can put it down either way you like. There's actually a good reason for putting the minus first and the plus second. So I'm going to put that down. But then I'll mention that reason, which is something you don't need to know. You, you know the pattern for that particular one. I don't know why I put a bracket there. If you've got a squared minus b squared, that becomes a minus b, a plus b. That's the pattern you just used. And of course, a multiplication is commutative. It can go either way around. However, there's another pattern, which you don't know, because I don't think you can get it anywhere in school, which is the difference of two cubes. Now, the pattern for the difference of two cubes goes like this. A minus B. Look, it starts the same way. And it just goes, but it, it sort of builds down. It, it goes A squared plus AB plus B squared. Notice that they're all pluses. And all the powers add up to threes. You're not meant to know that. But that keeps that consistent with that. So you've got the single subtraction at the front. And the remaining factors all plus. I could add that the pattern's the same for the difference in any power. Difference in power fours, difference in power fives, and so on. So it doesn't really matter at this level. You can put them down either way you like. Mm -hmm.